Dr. Jim Preddy. We did the one on the forearm, and everybody requested me to do one for the leg, so I'm just going to do some basic principles on the leg to try to get you guys to think better about the legs. Okay, first of all, we'll go through the muscles. Okay, on the front, sartorius, the quadriceps. Okay, sartorius, longest muscle in the human body, goes from the anterior superior iliac spine all the way down to just medial to the tibial tuberosity. We'll talk about that in a minute. Quadriceps, okay, rectus femoris, which is the one that goes across the hip, kicking muscle, right? Cause you to flex your knee, flex yourself at the hip, as well as extend at the knee. Okay, the rest of the quadriceps they just extend at the knee. But the important thing about these quadriceps and the way that the knee works is the vastus medialis. The vastus medialis fibers don't run straight up and down, because if you look at your leg, most of the muscles of your thigh are on the outside of your thigh, and the shortest distance between two points is a straight line, which does not include the kneecap between your hip and your tibia, tibial tuberosity. So what you really need is something that pulls the kneecap over into the midline and gets it to go into the groove that's in front of the two femoral condyles. And that's what the vastus medialis does. This muscle on the inside, its fibers run this way. So in the last 15 degrees of extension, it pulls the kneecap over and puts it into the groove. If you have problems with it, especially people as they get older, this muscle is the one that gets weak on them first. And they get what's called patellofemoral tracking syndrome, where since it's not pulling, the patella starts to grind along the lateral side of your femur, or along the lateral femoral condyle. And as it does that, people will jog and they'll start to feel pain on the outside. If you push on the medial side, they'll feel pain out there as they extend their knee. If you push on the lateral side of their kneecap, the pain goes away because you're keeping the kneecap off. There are specific exercises you can do. You can look up on the internet about how to do exercises that strengthen just the vastus medialis for good knee health. On the knee joint, when they talk about the knee joint, the thing about the knee joint that they're gonna quiz you on is about the, not just the ACL and PCL, but actually the, the medial collateral ligament and the lateral collateral ligament, ligament and their differences. The major differences is on the medial collateral ligament, medial collateral ligament actually touches the medial meniscus. Whereas on the lateral, lateral side, it's a bridge that goes from the, fe the femur all the way to the fibula. And it's not touching the lateral meniscus. Which is the reason why the unhappy triad is the medial meniscus, the, um, uh, sorry, the medial collateral ligament, the medial meniscus, and then the ACL. The reason being, if you feel with your finger along the inside of the femoral condyle, that twisting motion that causes this pain if somebody hits you from the side and it starts to tear through your medial collateral ligament, that usually extends along your medial meniscus. And then the inside, as that shifts, the inside of your femoral condyle cuts through your ACL. Okay, stick your finger on the inside of these things and feel them. They're really sharp. And that's why the ACL can be cut right in half by a shearing force on the inside of the knee. So let's talk about the blood. Okay. First of all, gluteus maximus. Your gluteus maximus doesn't really do anything. Reach down and grab your own butt right now. Your gluteus maximus isn't doing anything. It doesn't do anything until your knees get about 30 degrees. Then, when you're like climbing stairs and stuff like that, that will actually, not the little light going up, <laughs> that doesn't do anything. But actually bending past 30 degrees, that's what gluteus maximus does. Plus, along with the uh, tensor fascia lata on the legs, it locks the knee. Okay? The iliotibial band on the side of the leg here has been an organized piece of fascia. Instead of being dense, irregular connective tissue like the rest of the fascia lata, it becomes dense, regular condition, connective tissue. And you only find that in one place, tendons, ligaments. So the lateral side of the fascia lata has become a ligament, sorry, a tendon for the tensor fascia lata and the gluteus maximus. What do they do? They lock your knee. Okay? We're the only animals that do that that are shaped like this. Okay? We lock our knees. How do you know? Take your hands and play, find the anterior superior iliac spine and go just lateral and inferior to it. So just put your hands down like this. Now lock your knees, not hard, just have your legs locked, and then just rock back and forth. And you'll feel that muscle pop out. Now to make sure that I'm right, bend your knees. When you bend your knees and rock back and forth, that muscle doesn't do anything. Okay? So this muscle is meant to lock the cup of your uh, knee into the meniscus. And once it's locked in there, it takes a muscle, the popliteus on the back of your knee, to unlock it. 
Okay, but it's a way that you can stand without having to constantly strain your legs in order to stand. Other primates that we teach them how to stand up and walk on their legs, they have to flex their thigh muscles and their hamstrings at the same time to stay that way. We don't. We can lock our knee and relax the thigh muscles. That being said, gluteus medius going, gluteus maximus going on down to gluteus medius. What does the gluteus medius do? Gluteus medius, when they, when they tell you the action, the action is abduction, abduction. But that's not really what it does, because instead of being an anatomical position, we're talking about what does it do when your foot is planted and your weight is on your leg. When you distribute the weight onto your leg after you're taking a step, what it does is it pulls down hard on your hips, lifting your opposite hip up so that when you take a step, you can bring your foot smoothly underneath you without dragging your toes on the ground. If it doesn't work, instead, you will take a step Use your abdominal muscles and lean way over to the other side and swing your foot around. And they call that a Trendelenburg gait. And you've seen people walk like that. And it looks like there's a problem with the left side of their body, but it's not. It's the right side of their body where their gluteus medius doesn't contract hard enough to use like a seesaw, class two lever, and pick their hips up to move their leg underneath. Are you with me so far? Okay. Um, the other consequence of that is that everybody knows if you've ever been on a crazy long hike, what is it that hurts? Your hips on the sides from so many times of you taking a step and when you take a step, lifting up that other hip to bring your foot underneath. And that's what gets sore is your two gluteus medius muscles. Your gluteus minimus is on the inside, a little bit deeper to that. And actually it attaches a little anterior and helps with internal rotation of your hips. Okay, so let's talk about hamstrings. Three hamstring muscles going down the back, they all come from here, right? They all come from the ischial tuberosity. And they go down and grab your knee. Now, if you think about the design of trying to bend your knee, you have to bend and grab your knee and pull it this way. Well, just having one muscle here wouldn't make any sense, of course, because then it would just flap in the wind. But we'd have, if you had two, you'd attach one on the outside and one on the inside. But if those muscles didn't pull perfectly, then you twist the knee as you pulled it back. So instead, you had a third muscle that goes around and actually grabs on the front here. Grabs on the front of the knee, just medial to the tibial tuberosity, the semitendinosus. So you have biceps femoris grabbing here on the fibular head. You have semimembranosus grabbing here on the back of the tibia. And semitendinosus going around and grabbing the front. So you're making a triangle on the knee. So coming from the ischial tuberosity, you form a triangle around the knee so that you bend it very stably. Does that make sense? Okay. You have another one running upwards. You guys heard of pes anserinus? Pes anserinus is three muscles that attach just medial to the tibial tuberosity and reach up and grab all three bones of the pelvis. If they grow from here, reaches up and grabs the ischial tuberosity, that's semi-tendinosis, right? If it goes from here and reaches up and grabs the pubic bone in the front, gracilis. If it goes from here and reaches all the way up and grabs the anterior superior iliac spine, which is ilium, that's sartorius. So the sartorius, gracilis, and semitendinosus form the pes anserinus, so that all three pieces of the pelvis are actually used to stabilize the knee. So the knee is stabilizing the pelvis, pelvis is stabilizing the knee. Does that make sense? Okay. So, um, and the hamstrings, like we talked about, they do bend the, bend the knee and also extend the leg, but what they really are are standing muscles. What you stand on all day long are your hamstring muscles being nice and tight, not your gluteal muscles. When you get below the knee, below the knee, we talk mostly about the gastrocnemius and the soleus. Now, the gastrocnemius is the one on the outside, big two lobe muscle, on the very posterior, and it crosses the knee and attaches here on the two femoral condyles. Now, where it attaches on the femoral condyles makes it different from the soleus, which attaches below the knee, both of which go into the calcaneus, right? with me so far. The soleus is actually a muscle that's mostly slow twitch muscle. It's meant for walking and going all day long. The gastrocnemius is a fast twitch muscle and it's made for jumping. The soleus works when the knee is in any position and that's the reason why they have the um, machines that you put your knees underneath and you just lift your toes up and that works your soleus. But if you want to work your gastrocnemius this is too short so you have to stand up put the weight on your shoulders that way. That's gastrocnemius. 
well, how does the gastric medius make you jump compared to the soleus? And what I try to tell people is that if you could curl 100 pounds, okay, you can probably hold 200 pounds. Do you believe me? Okay, you can hold a lot more weight than you can curl. Well, that's what's going on in the gastric medius because what it's doing is when you try to jump, as you bend down and try to jump up, it locks the distance between the back of your femur and your calcaneus. So that as I extend with my quadriceps, I'm actually pulling my heels off the ground and pointing my toes. Do you understand that? Because if I made you jump in a boot where you couldn't jump with your toes, you wouldn't go very high. And if I let you jump but with your calf muscles, but I locked your knee, you wouldn't go very high. But the addition of the two of them is really not additive, it's multiplication, right? So the gastrocnemius pulling on the back of the femur and pulling on the back of the calcaneus while your quadricep muscles are extending your knee pulls your heels off the ground and makes you jump. And that's why the gastrocnemius is a jumping muscle and the soleus is a walking muscle. So then the Tom, Dick, and Harry muscles. Tom, Dick, and Harry muscles are important because of what they do. Now on the front, the tibialis anterior um, ends up lifting up your foot. The, the uh, extensor digitorum ends up lifting up all of your toes. Okay, and that's the extensor digitorum longus. And then the um, extensor hallucis extends your great toe. Those aren't very complicated at all. On the back, they become incredibly complicated because what they do is they go around the medial malleolus and after going around the medial malleolus, go underneath this ledge, which is called the sustum taculum tali. See what my finger is under right there? And that sustum taculum tali actually is making your foot into a wheelbarrow. Okay? You think about a wheelbarrow, you think about where the weight is on your foot. The weight's in the middle, your toes are the fulcrum, and you're lifting up on your heels. Are you with me so far? Okay. Well, what I need is for there to be weight picked up through the arch of my foot. Okay? And the way you do that, the way you create the arch of your foot is that your flexor hallucis, your flexor digitorum, and your tibialis posterior go around the back of the medial malleolus, but then lift the sustum taculum tali and create the arch of your foot. Okay? By pulling down and pushing down on your toes, they're lifting up and creating the arch of your foot. So the arch of your foot comes from your Tom, Dick, and Harry muscles in the back. Are you with me on that? All right, now, what about arteries and nerves, okay? The artery comes in the front. The femoral artery ends up being right here, comes right over the top of this. The femoral artery comes down and then splits, sending off a deep artery, the profundum, uh, it's called a, it's the deep, deep femoral artery, but it's actually, it's like profunda femoralis is the name. But the deep femoral artery then goes and lays right on top of the adductor muscles giving them perforating arteries. They go through them and into your hamstrings. So your hamstrings are being fed by perforating arteries from the front. Okay? Then finally, the femoral artery catches up down at the adductor hiatus and switches sides. Goes through the adductor, adductor hiatus so that your femoral artery is now still in the front with the femoral vein behind it. And so the first thing behind your knee is the femoral artery. That femoral artery then goes down and then gives off the superior geniculates gives off both the inferior geniculates. And then you get down to what's called the trifurcation. At the level of the trifurcation, you have the anterior and posterior tibial arteries. When you give off the anterior tibial artery, it actually has an, a tibial recurrent. The posterior tibial also has a, post, uh, an, a, uh, an, a posterior tibial recurrent artery. But that third, the posterior tibial artery, gives off a fibular artery. And that fibular artery goes out and runs all the way down the uh, lateral fibula to give blood to the fibularis longus and the fibularis brevis, or peroneus longus, peroneus brevis, however you learn that. Are you with me on that? The posterior, posterior tibial artery travels with the tibial nerve, just the tibial nerve, that's all it's called. Posterior tibial artery travels with the tibial nerve. They go down, go around the medial malleolus, along with the Tom, Dick, and Harry muscles. Tom, Dick, and Harry. Tom, tibialis posterior, Dick, flexor digitorum, A-N, Harry. Artery, nerve, artery being
being the posterior tibial artery, nerve being the tibial nerve, and then hairy is uh, flexor hallucis longus. Now after they go around the corner there, it becomes the plantar, medial and lateral plantar arteries. And we'll go over the foot on another video. Are you with me so far? It's the nerves you have to learn next. So although the tibial nerve and the peroneal nerve, I'll call the fibular nerve the peroneal nerve because that's how I remember it. Although they travel, um, they look like one nerve, they're really two nerves that are just traveling together. They end up giving off those two medial and lateral sural nerves that come back together to form the sural nerve. As the peroneal nerve comes down, it ends up going right underneath the head of the fibula, okay, and is covered by the flexor, I'm oh, sorry, the peroneus longus. It then splits to try to get into this anterior compartment. To get to the anterior compartment, it's got to go deep down into this hole, and so it's the deep peroneal nerve that goes to travel with the anterior tibial artery. That deep peroneal nerve runs the tibialis anterior, the extensor hallucis, and the extensor digitorum. The superficial peroneal nerve runs the peroneus longus and the peroneus brevis. Okay? and ends up running all the way, runs out along the lateral side of the foot. The tibial nerve ends up continuing on and traveling down the back of the foot and going along with the Tom, Dick, and Harry, and becomes the medial and lateral plantar nerves. Be with me on that. So the last two things, one thing I forgot that I want to talk about was the peroneus longus and peroneus brevis. Okay, peroneus longus and peroneus brevis reach down, grab the foot, and cause eversion of the foot. Okay, eversion, where your foot picks up. Pick your pinky toe up as high as you can get it. That's eversion. The way they name inversion and eversion is with your feet. If your heels go in, it's inversion. Okay, so when you twist your ankle, that's usually an inverted ankle. Eversion is when you pick your pinky toes up as high as you can get them. That's eversion. Well, when you're sleeping and the way your foot's just hanging and dangling, the lateral side of your foot dangles down more. So that every time you try to, try to take a stride, when you land with your foot, you want your foot to be flat. To do that, you must evert your foot in order to land with a flat foot. And that inversion comes from the prone, mostly the peroneus longus and the peroneus brevis. The peroneus brevis goes down and grabs hold of just the fifth base of the fifth metatarsal. But there is, see this hole right here? That hole is so that the peroneus longus can go hook underneath it and then travel in this groove that goes all the way across the bottom of the foot to attach here and pull the foot down on the inside while the peroneus brevis is pulling up on the, on the lateral side. Does that make sense? So it's almost like reaching under and grabbing hold and pulling down this foot, this side of the foot, while my peroneus brevis pulls up on the lateral side so that they cause two-sided rotation or eversion of the foot. Are you with me on that? And both of them because they go around the back of the lateral malleolus cause plantar flexion. Any questions on those? You guys want to stop right there? Is that enough? <laughs>